So Intel Rocket Lake is going to be coming out pretty soon in the next couple of weeks. It's looking like it's going to be the 16th of March in the US and Europe. And I've got some new information about the specs and the lineup of these CPUs here. And I also wanna go over some benchmarks of the 11700K. And also I wanna talk about the pricing of these new CPUs. So I've made a couple of videos already about Rocket Lake and you can go and check those videos out as well if you want to. Although I'm gonna cover a lot of that information in this video anyway. And this video has all of the latest information about Rocket Lake. Now, uh, in terms of motherboards, you will be able to use Rocket Lake with your Z490 motherboard and also uh, the H470. And there is another one called a Q470, though I'm not too familiar with that. But you can use it for those mother with those motherboards. Uh, but the uh, B460 and the H410, you won't be able to use it uh, with those motherboards. Now there will be Z590 motherboards coming and uh, the big difference is that you will be able to get PCIe Gen 4 lane support on those Z590 motherboards. So that's the difference between whether you want to go with a Z490 or a Z590. And uh, there are some videos out there already because AMD Ryzen uh, processors support PCIe Gen Lane 4 and you can see what the difference is going to be if you watch those videos uh, where they compare PCIe 3 to PCIe 4. Usually the difference is like about 4 to 5 percent at the very most in terms of gaming. So that's really up to you to decide whether that's worth it. Uh, do you want to future-proof yourself a little bit? Uh, and it Ultimately, it really depends on the price. I think whether that extra four to five percent is really worth it. So WCC FTech had some exclusive information about the Intel Rocket Lake lineup for the 11700 and the 11900. I'm gonna just put that on the screen right now. And as you can see, they're all gonna be eight core 16 thread CPUs. We've known that for quite a while now. Now the package is the same, uh, which means it will also work on the Z490 motherboards. So the package is LGA 1200. The TDP is pretty much the same as the Comet Lake, and I'd expect the um, power usage to be about the same as Comet Lake, uh, though we really have to test it to find out. Uh, but essentially the uh, non-K parts, the non-unlocked parts, they will be uh, 65 watts TDP, and then the uh, unlocked parts, the K parts, will be 125 watts TDP. Now, uh, the difference between the 11900 and the 11700 is that the 11900 seem to have a thermal velocity boost for the one core, whereas uh, the 11700 don't. Now, if you recall, the thermal velocity boost is, uh, it takes the faster of the two favored CPU cores to a speed higher than what's achieved with Turbo Boost Max 3. Now, as you can see here, it says thermal velocity boost 3.0. I think that's supposed to read Turbo Boost Max 3. So all of these CPUs have Turbo Boost Max 3 and only the 11900 have the thermal velocity boost single core. So as you can see there, 11900K has 5.3 gigahertz for the thermal velocity boost one core and the 11900 is 5.2. So that's kind of how they differentiate between the 11900 and the 11700. And with the 11700K, your max boost will be five gigahertz, so 0.3 gigahertz less. So it's still no slouch, uh, it's just there's a 0.3 gigahertz difference between the 700K and the 900K. So just one thing I wanna add, and it's about the B560 motherboards, is that they'll be able to overclock up to 4,000 megahertz on the DDR4 memory, whereas on the uh, B460 motherboards, you could only overclock them up to 2,666 megahertz last time. So that's good news for people who wanna build a PC on a budget. Uh, you get more choice now, although really, there's no such thing as a budget PC anymore, but you can choose between your B560 option, your Z490, and also, your Z590 motherboards. Now let's talk about benchmarks for the 11700K and we have some new uh, benchmark scores here that I want to show you guys and uh, the first one I want to show you is the CPU Z score which is from video cards and computer based forums and it looks like the 11700K single thread score is 669.3 the 11700K multi-thread is 6377.2 
Now, if you wanna compare that to the 10700K scores on the CPU-Z, I've got that right here, and it looks like it's got about 20% better in a single-threaded performance, and for multi-threaded performance, it's about 13 to 14% better. Now I've got some 11700K Cinebench scores and I've compared that to the 10700K scores here. So in single core performance, it's about 15% improvement over the 10700K and the multi-core performance is about 10% improvement. So Andreas Schilling, he wanted to compare it to the latest AMD Zen 3 CPUs and uh, this is the single threaded performance of the 11700K versus the 5800X and the 5950X. And you can see it's pretty close, though the uh, 5800X is ahead. And in multi-threaded performance, the 5800X is still ahead. Obviously the 5950X, because it's 16 cores and 32 threads, that's gonna be way ahead. So finally, I got some time spy scores, and for the 11700K, it scores 12,580 points. The 10700K in comparison got 11,366 points. So very much in line with those other benchmarks of the CPU. And for Time Spy Extreme, the 11700K got 5,802 points. And I didn't get a comparison for the 10700K because it's not actually on the official website. And I didn't want to use any of the user scores because they could be overclocked. So finally, I just want to touch on the pricing and there's a leak here from Harukaze who has uh, prices from Milwaukee PC who've listed all of their prices for the 11th gen Intel CPUs and the 11900K is going to go for $600 in the US. The 11700K is $485 and the 11600K is $310. So as you can see there, uh, two cores, four threads, is that gonna be worth it to pay uh, almost double the price for that 11900K? And that's gonna be really up to people uh, to decide whether they think they should go with eight core, 16 threads, or whether they should go with six cores, 12 threads. And I think uh, that's a pretty significant saving if you aren't too bothered by extra two cores and four threads. If you don't wanna hold onto your CPU for that long, uh, well, you could probably get away with 11600K, pocket that $300 for, I guess, uh, a CPU uh, down the line, uh, maybe in three or four years, you wanna upgrade again, then uh, maybe the 11600K would be the option to go with. If you want some more longevity, then maybe you'd wanna go with uh, a higher end CPU. So one thing I want to touch on before I go is what are you actually getting for your money's worth between the K model versus the non-K model? And as you can see there, the 11900K is $600, the 11900 is $509. So what are you getting for that $90 worth of value? And as you can see, the TDP there is 65 watts for the 11900 but the 11900K is operating at 125 watts uh, of TDP. And that's the uh, power usage at the base clock. So at the base clock, the 11900 is 2.5 gigahertz. The 11900K is operating at 3.5 gigahertz. Now, ultimately, the base clock doesn't mean too much because the CPU is just going to fall back down to the base clock when it gets thermally throttled. But normally, when the CPU is doing work, it's going to be boosting to a high frequency until it can no longer hold that frequency, and then it's going to just fall back down to the base clock. How long that holds for is actually called the tau. And uh, for the tau, for the Comet Lake, CPUs, the 125 watt models tended to have a longer tau than the 65 watt models. So as you can see here in this table, the 125 watt models had a tau of 56 seconds, whereas the 65 watt models had a tau of 28 seconds, so it couldn't hold that boost as long. Now this is most likely down to the fact that the 125 watt models are better binned CPUs, so they have just have better silicon and they can hold that power for longer. Now, technically, you could configure that tau in the motherboard to hold as long as possible so that the um, CPU doesn't get thermally throttled, and you could very well do so if you have good enough cooling on your CPU, but that's probably a topic that's a little bit too deep for what we're talking about right now, but all you're really thinking about here is um, your 11900 non-K model is probably not gonna be as good a bin as your 11900K model, so the 11900K 
is going to be able to sustain that boost for longer and use less power to get to that boost. So in gaming, should you get the non-K model or the K model? Now, if you look at these specs here, the 11900 goes to 4.7 gigahertz on the A-Core Turbo. The 11900K goes to 4.8 gigahertz. So the non-K model goes very close to that 11900K. And uh, is the public not going to hold that boost for as long as that K model? But I don't think that's gonna make too much of a difference in games because your GPU should be the one that's always maxed out. Uh, whereas your CPU isn't going to be maxed out all the time. So I think it's not gonna be that much of an issue for people to get the uh, non-K model. And you can go and check uh, benchmarks for the games that you like, and you'll see that the non-K model is gonna run the K model very close. And so I think for gamers, they probably don't need to get the K model, if, especially if they want to save some money. Okay, so that's about it for this video. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.